Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's update. As you can tell, I am not on the water today. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a brief breakdown on the reports that I did here from the river and the ocean today, and then we're gonna do some arts and crafts time, because what else do you do as a guide on your day off but get ready for your next day of fishing? So we're gonna talk about bumpers and why they're important, but first, let's go ahead and talk about what's been happening down there at the coast. So the reports that I've heard from today is that it's a little bit more of the same, still slow, but we should continue to see the bike get better as the tides improve here later on in the week. Uh, some guys found five or six Chinook today, some guys only had one or two bites. Now if I was down there today, <coughs> excuse me, if I was down there today, I probably would have spent most of my time fishing from checkerboard on down to say Chinook, Ilwaco, the Red Can Line, out to Buoy 10 essentially. So I would have spent most of my time down there, but it sounds like the majority of the fish that were in fact caught today were around Hammond or uh, the church hole on up above the bridge on both sides of the river. Again, it's nothing to chase because it was just a handful of fish, two or three fish caught here or there. Um, definitely not a hot bite by any means, but it should continue to get better. And why? Because of what we saw in the ocean yesterday. The ocean yesterday was very good, very productive for both Chinook and Coho, and the Coho were big. We saw some awesome 10, 12 pound class fish caught that were even hatchery. It was pretty cool to see. And it sounds like they're seeing that more of that today with uh, the bite being pretty decent out there in the ocean, both north and south. Whether you're fishing the Red Can line from four out to CR, even south a little bit towards Seaside, a couple, three miles, or up off the Candlestick, up to the condos, even the cell tower, there's fish spread out. But here's my one tip, uh, my one little word of advice if you are gonna go out there in the ocean. One, of course, be safe. The bar yesterday was a little bit lumpy. Take your time, don't go out there if it looks a little bit too sketchy, it's just a fish. Number two is get away from the boats. Don't feel like just because that's where the charter boats are or where you see a bunch of guide boats, that's where you need to be. When we went as far away from the other boats as we possibly could, we found a better bite. It's less pressured fish. There's less noise than not getting pounded with all that gear and you're gonna find more biters. So don't be afraid to get away from the crowd and try and find some new fish they haven't seen a bait because they are active feeders and they will play. Okay, arts and crafts time, let's get into it. First off, what is a bumper? Well, a bumper is what we use to separate our flasher, be it a fish flash, one of those eight inch triangle style flashers, or a 360 flasher from our main line and our dropper. That's really important because when we're dropping our gear down to depth, you're gonna see some differences in the current speed. You don't want your stuff to tangle up, or if someone tends to drop the line down a little bit too fast, you don't want your gear to tangle up. This bumper is what will help prevent that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm making up some bumpers for my 360 flashers. Already earlier today, I made up a bunch for my triangle flashers, the fish flash. So uh, first let's talk about length. For your fish flash, eight inch style flashers, the triangle style, about 12 to 18 inches is all you need. For your 360 style flashers, the one that rotate, flip everything around, you're gonna want a little bit longer leader, longer bumper here, about 24 inches. So what I'm using is maximum monofilament. It's 175 pound, but what's most important is, let's see if I can get it to focus, there it goes, the diameter. Pay really close attention to the diameter, be it in inches or in millimeters, one of the two. Very, very important to have consistency in your bumper material. And the reason why is because it has to match up with the sleeves that you use. So for the 175 pound Maxima there, it is working with size 8T sleeves from AFW here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is pull out 24 inches and I have one that's already built, so I'll just match it up to that. If I can here, there we go. There we are. A little bit extra for my loops. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut it. Okay, so now we're going to create our first loop, taking our sleeves here, and these are double barrel sleeves. So I put a line through one of the holes, then back through the other. Push it out just far enough, so that way the sleeve can create a bite. Let's see if I can get it to focus again. There it goes. So I don't have too much monofilament sticking out the back end there. I don't want to leave a long tag because that's something else that it's going to catch on. We're going to talk about how to resolve that here right now. So just a short little nub sticking out there so that way the sleeve has enough to bite on. So let's go ahead and crimp this here. Make sure you get a good crimping tool. 
needle nose pliers will not help you do this. We don't want any gear failure, so I just always make sure everything's all nice and pinched up closed. Not too much pressure, you don't want to flatten out the mono, just enough to get it crimped. Okay, now we're going to add our first piece of heat shrink tubing. This is quarter inch heat shrink tubing. You can get it at any, come on, focus. You can get it at any hardware store. And again, I use quarter inch. That quarter inch fits perfectly with the first heat shrink tubing with a six millimeter bead. Hold up there, six millimeter bead. Put that first bead on. Okay. Then the second bead, and then my second section of heat shrink tubing. Now I'm going to talk about how long to cut this here in just a second. Then my second sleeve to close off the loop and finish out my bumper. Okay, there we go. Shorten it up. Looks good. Cool. Crimpers again, tighten all down, no gear failures, nice and tight. All right, so why did we need the heat shrink tubing and the six millimeter bead? Because it would work just the way it's already built. Here's why. Because, take this little section here. If you have just this section down there, see if I can get it to focus again, just this section down here. You see that little nub that's hanging out right here? If your main line or your leader or especially your dropper line comes rubs up against that, it's gonna catch right there. See if I can get that thing to focus a little bit better so you guys can see it. Yeah, there we go. So it's gonna catch right there. We don't want that. If it catches, that's gonna create a huge tangle. So what we do is we take that heat shrink tubing and that six millimeter bead we cut the heat shrink tubing so it's just long enough to cover up my sleeve. Focus once again. Cover up my sleeve like so. Just over top of the sleeve, not too far. And then I leave my bead. Come on, focus. Sorry, guys. There you go. And then I leave my bead halfway out of the heat shrink tubing. I don't want the heat shrink tubing to completely cover that bead because if we do that, it's going to leave a little edge on the heat shrink tubing when it comes all the way over top of it and your line will catch on that too. So I push the bead so it's halfway out of the heat shrink tubing and that tends to work out a little bit better. So now we're going to add some heat and close this up. Make sure everything's all lined up. Looks good. Grab my lighter. Now remember, monofilament is plastic. Plastic melts under heat. It's all, yeah, whatever. We'll get this back up here so that way you can focus. Plastic melts under heat. So what we're gonna do is we're going to keep our lighter flame as far away from the heat shrink tubing as possible. Back it up a little bit so you guys can see. Focus, there we go. I keep it far enough away here so it gets just enough heat to close it up. A little ever so closely closer. There we go. Good. And then I roll it over. Do the same on the other side. Now, this is 175 pounds. So if you do see your monofilament tend to fold over a little bit from the heat, it's not the end of the world. So once you do it on this side, obviously you do it on the other. And I got one already built here to show you. So on this side here, it's all closed up and done. Focus, focus, there it goes. So that one's all closed up and done. So is this side here, the bead sticking out. So now I have my 24 inch section for my 360 flasher with beads on each end with the heat shrink tubing so that way my line will never get caught running over top of that and I avoid any angles, uh, angles, <laughs> avoid any tangles that I can. From here, you just add on a little snap swivel that attaches to your flasher, and then your other snap swivel attaches to your free sliding spreader here. Uh, the reason why we're using these is because you can fix tie it. So you fix tie onto this end over here. That way, uh, so this end goes out to your bumper, then out to your 360 flasher. This side attaches to your main line. 
The reason why we're fixed tying it like that with snaps is to avoid line twist. Those 360 flashers are notorious for torching your line. And if you're running braided line, it's expensive. You don't want to have that all twisted up. So use this free sliding spreader, attach your main line onto this end, your dropper direct tie on the bottom, then your bumper over here on this side out to your 360 flasher. With that weight there, it creates a section that cannot be twisted. The weight from your lead just prevents it from twisting up past right here at the end of the free sliding spreader. So that is arts and crafts time for today since I have the day off. That is how you make a bumper for your triangle style flashers like the fish flash or for your 360 style flashers. So tomorrow I'm gonna to be back on the boat. I'm headed back down there so I can be working on a lot of gear and I can talk to you guys about how to create uh, your leaders, how to build spinners, um, whatever you guys want, honestly. So if you have something that you wanna make sure gets answered, be sure to hit me up, let me know. Just put it in the comments and I'll be sure to try and take care of that tomorrow while I'm back on the boat. We're gonna go through gear a little bit more, everything from bait, to your leaders, spacing on hooks, flashes, choosing color, all that fun stuff since I got the time to do it. So thanks again guys for tuning in and we'll see you tomorrow on the water. Later.